think of things like volcanoes and so on. If a scientist wants data to be collected from a volcano, we are not going to send a grad student there. My name is Pratap Tokekar and I'm an assistant professor in the ECE department. I'm especially interested in using robots as sensors and sensing agents. There's a number of scenarios, applications that we can think of, things like environmental monitoring, first response, emergency response, security, surveillance, where we really need eyes and ears on the ground or in the air. Uh, it's a 3D, it's dull, dirty or dangerous to send a human uh, in those regions. The goal is to get a bunch of robots, uh, equip them with sensors and send them out in the area of interest and have them go and autonomously explore the environment and do the sensing for you. So a simple example would be if you're exploring uh, an environment, uh, let's say an indoor environment, not all regions are accessible to a ground robot. So for example, a ground robot won't be able to go over steps or the ground robot won't not be able to look at the ceiling. But you may have an aerial robot which is flying above the ground, which can look at the ceiling, which can look above tables, look above structures, can fly through the corridors and so on. On the other hand, a ground robot may be able to go under a table and sort of go in narrow confined spaces and be able to give you good views from that. So how do you now automatically decide which type of robot should go where and how do they exchange information with each other? This is a notoriously hard problem in computer science and it's been around for the past 20-30 years. We were able to look at a very small subset, a very restricted case of the problem which was still computationally a challenging problem and we were able to come up with a result uh, which is uh, very promising. It's robots, uh, <laughs> I, think, I don't think I need to say more. <laughs>